Hi folks. One of the things that we do with Paradise Lost as we look at it is ask the question, is this an epic, an epic poem, or is it a tragedy? Because some folks will look at the focus on Satan and see something of the tragic hero in him and talk about Paradise Lost as a tragedy. Well, Let's look at that, mostly to look at the character of Satan here. Because we're going to consider uh, three points. First is the structure of the poem itself. And second, who is the protagonist of the poem? And third, how does our protagonist behave? First point, structure is easily answered. Milton's structure does it, structured Paradise Lost as an epic poem. His first edition of version contained 10 books. He divided those a bit more, made it 12 books for the second edition, the one that also has the nice, the argument thing in the front for summary. Uh, his publisher suggested that he do that because people couldn't understand the poem. It's a good point. But at any rate, structured very consciously as an epic. His theme is mankind's fall and redemption. Okay, that's an epic theme. Redemption being our word there at the end. A, a rather important one. So, how about our protagonist? Now, Milton would consider his protagonist the Son of God, that being the only way that uh, he is so identified within the poem. But the Son of God is definitely heroic, is the epic hero, because he is the one who would undertake the task of saving humanity, keeping them from being cast into hell, and he does that offering redemption by his sacrifice, his journey into and through hell, his emerging unscathed, and all, and all of that. He is the instrument of human redemption. But you know what? We have a problem. We really don't see an awful lot of him in the poem. Is he central to the action throughout? Well, no. Most of the time, Satan is central to the action. Uh, we've got uh, some areas where we don't have Satan around, but they don't seem to be such big deals, and they tend to focus on Adam. So, uh, yes, you can ask that question. And... Our second question regarding any hero, hey, is the hero challenged? Doubts? No. Adversity? No, because he is the one who can and will survive of these things and all of this, and we don't have him, uh, oh, grappling with the, the, the monster like Beowulf in danger of being killed or things like that. No, because he's the son of God, which makes him a bit uh, too perfect for most of these things to happen to him. So that's just not quite satisfactory. How about Satan? Yes, Lucifer, who falls and becomes Satan, he is central to the action. He has all the best lines. He appears to have characteristics of a tragic hero because, yes, the fall begins with Satan's tragic flaw, pride, hubris. He wants to be first among the worshipers of God and is angry when he is not, challenges. God, and of course he falls. And then having fall, he continues his, his battle with God, 
Seeking Revenge Engineers the Fall of Humankind. So Satan is, uh, yes, appears something of our tragic hero. Now, even treated or thought of by some more in the light of a Promethean hero, one who gives humankind a great gift. Percy Shelley raised that question and suggested that Milton was really secretly on Satan's side. Why? Fall from grace? Hey, that a good thing? An equivalent to Prometheus giving fire to humankind. Folks, yes. The bliss, blissful life described by Milton in the Paradise Lost Before the Fall is also a life of ignorance. After all, that tree that uh, people are not allowed to eat from is the tree of knowledge, knowledge of good and evil. Do we want to be, well, ignorant? Or another take on that is the fall itself inevitable. That tree is sitting in the middle of the garden. Hey, it's out there to be seen. Temptation is there from the beginning. Eventually, will humanity succumb? Is that an inevitable? And considering the weaving of the world thereafter, does God actually want the fall from grace? Goodness, very heretical notion. Milton wouldn't have liked it. Milton definitely would not have liked it. Counter to all of his intentions, it makes his very unpleasant Satan far too heroic and such as that. However, and this is a big problem, what makes the fall worth it, humanity worth it, everything worth it regardless? Free will. Free will is requisite to humans being human according to Milton and according to the lines that he put in the mouth of his deity. The ability to choose is integral to the human spirit. You choose all sorts of little things, choose the very big ones. People choose right and wrong. Does the possession of this ability to choose mean that sometimes humans will make the wrong choice? Does free will require fallibility, or is it integrally tied to fallibility? Now that's a question that we can have sitting out there, and we're stuck with it, regardless of what we think of Satan, but we shouldn't think too much of him. Notions of him as a tragic hero are very flawed. As a Promethean hero, oh good heavens, please, no, 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 no. Because he is not a figure worthy of emulation. I mean, he has pride and all the rest. That's the standard uh, classical flaw. But is he noble? He sounds noble sometimes or often. Evil be thou my good. And his, uh, yes, very fine-sounding little internal arguments as he looks at what he has lost and says, no, I cannot uh, not fall, hello God, I couldn't honestly do so, my own integrity pro prohibits it and such as that. He chatters on in a manner that one might think he was an existential hero. One might uh, have him clomping in about hell with uh, 
of Camus' heroes having chosen a better thing than God. Well, no, it's not a better thing, and Milton does quite clearly tell us that, shows us that. How? Through Satan's tactics. Satan's tactics are nasty throughout. Evil be thou my good means that everything he does or attempts, he is going to corrupt, twist, misuse. Satan is not desirable. The council and pandemonium, he deceives his own followers, sets himself up to make himself look like a grand hero to them. Every action uses foul and deceitful means. He's sneaky. He shows up in secret in the night and in disguise and all of this. He's a perpetual liar. He's the father of lies, after all. So is Loki in the Norse myth, but uh, that's another question. Uh, and we don't want to add a connection there. Instead, we want dear old Satan as a liar. His very appearance in Eden is debased, demonstrating that he is a declining figure, a nasty thing. His first appearance in, in Eden, he shows up as, as, a, as like a toad whispering in the ear of sleeping Eve whispering suggestions for deception. Then in the big scene, he shows up as what? A serpent. Any of you folks fond of serpents? Few of you may be, but not very many. Serpent gets lots of bad press. And Milton calls it the most, the most subtle of beasts. Subtle means deceptive. Snakes are sneaky creatures. How does he get Eve to sample the fruit? Does he say, oh, here is your chance to prove you are a human being, to go forth into the world to confront your deity? Why no, Eve has no intention on such things. No, he does that by lying about the qualities of the fruit. Deception, sneakiness. Satan is not nice. So, my conclusion on all this, well, whatever we want to do about genres, the thing is structured like an epic, and Milton called it an epic. It arguably has an epic hero. It's an epic. More clearly, it's not a tragedy, because Satan is not sufficiently heroic to be a tragic hero. He's a nasty figure, an ugly, deceptive being. Despite his fine language, he is not a uh, noble. And this whole question is rendered more complex. What the poem is, is rendered more complex by Milton's concern with free will. We talk a little more about that in class, because free will, prime, to humans, that ability to choose, ability to learn, the ability to make one's own way. Now, Calvinists believed in predestination. Milton didn't. I don't know how he got away with that, but he certainly didn't. And Calvinist, just though he claims to be, Milton puts into the mouth of his deity this notion that it is free will that makes it all worthwhile, that makes the creation of humankind with the fall and all the other negatives worthwhile. Free will matters. And that is where I come out with our structure and with Milton's theme.